Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about the SDCC Monster High doll that is going to be releasing this year, and that is the Freak Du Chic Draculaura. We did get images of her last week, and she is supposed to come out this Friday on the 21st. Is that right? Hold on, I have to check my calendar. Yes. Friday the 21st online and I believe she's going to be available on the 19th at the convention itself like if you're going in person to go buy the doll and I I mean first of all I'm not going to the convention I ain't got the money for that to like fly out and then stay there and do all that um, but I'm also not going to be getting her online so that's like the short version of my opinion but y'all know I love to give my opinion in long form and ad nauseum and just talk and talk and talk about why I don't like things. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I will say this is going to be a little bit nicer than some of my other videos that are kind of similar like this. For example, the Chucky and Tiffany release. That's like my number one example to go to because that was so dreadful. That was a video that was just me saying literally everything is terrible. <laughs> this one's going to be a lot more lighthearted. I personally don't like the doll, but I have a lot fewer issues with her. So like, it's gonna be a little calmer today. We can kind of take a breath and kind of discuss our feelings in the comments down below. But at least on my end, it's not like as dramatic. So I get to be a little bit less stressed this video, which is nice. Before I get into it though, as always, if you guys do find yourself enjoying, if you could give it a like, that's super helpful to me. And if you're new here and you like your time here, definitely subscribe so you can see more. But with that, let's go ahead. We're gonna start talking about the Freak to Chic Draculaura. So I'll pop up pictures on here, obviously. Like I'm not gonna just talk about a doll and not let you guys see what she looks like. I have to get out of the way that I was just disappointed that it is a Draculaura doll. So I do think that that is kind of impacting my feelings in general. I love Draculaura as much as the next person. I think that she consistently has really cool designs. I like vampires in general. So it's not that I don't like Draculaura. It is just one of those things where Mattel has been consistently putting out so many of the same characters for honestly all of their releases at this point. We're specifically talking about the like collector level dolls but they've been doing this with g3 too where they're kind of using this core cast of characters and that's really it we're not getting a lot of variety and so i think that i was hoping that we'd get a character that we hadn't seen in a while for the sdcc doll so knowing that that's not the case was really disappointing and it might be making me feel worse about the straculor than i would otherwise so in an effort to kind of be fair about my opinion that's where it all starts like that's <laughs> that's my number one complaint looking at the doll herself she comes with like the doll and then a little like trapeze bar i'm not 100 percent sure what you would call this she comes with a little count fabulous and then just a regular monster high stand so starting off i want to zoom in for a second a little bit on her face here i will say i think that her face is my favorite part about the stracular at all i think that the heart blush is super cute it's very thematic and it also just is absolutely adorable i feel like her face is very well done it's very well executed and yeah i honestly no complaints yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of her outfit. Uh, I think it was supposed to be inspired by like old style circus costumes. And I do really like the bat ear like headdress that she has going on. I think that's really cool. The bat wings attached to her jumpsuit is pretty much a given. Like <laughs> that's, you know, something that's obviously very thematic to a vampire and to Draculaura. And I don't mind the pattern of the bat wings. I like the fact that it looks like there's a few layers of the fabric. So it's got some sort of visual interest there. Where this doll loses me is everything else. <laughs> so real quick, I want to talk about Count Fabulous for a second because it's kind of hard to see. But I think that he's got some face paint and like a recolor for his little sweater. I would have loved for them to go a little bit further with it and give him like a hat or something. I don't know. I think it would have been cool to push Camp Fabulous a little bit further or even if they didn't do a different like design than they gave this doll. I think it would be cool if Cat Fabulous were molded different so that he could like hang on the trapeze or something like that. I don't know. I just... I like that they included Count Fabulous, but I do wish that we got a little bit more. And then back to the doll. So I just don't love the jumpsuit. Um, the gold metallic earrings and then like neck piece that she's got on, I'm not hugely offended by, but I do think that when you then pair it with the less gold shoes, it doesn't look good. And I think the problem is that it's not 
spread out enough through the outfit. So at the top of her head, we're including the headdress in this too, you have metallic pink at the top of her head, and then you switch it to a metallic gold, and then there's no more metallic pink or no more metallic gold on the rest of the outfit. That's all like shoulders up, right? And then there's a less metallic gold shoe, and it just feels very disjointed to me. It doesn't feel super cohesive. I feel like it would have been better if they went with like a metallic gold for all of this or a non-metallic gold for all of this. I just think those three elements, the shoes, the accessories, and then the headdress, all should have been one color or at least very close to one color just because I think that that would have added some cohesion that this doll desperately needs in my opinion. Again, you guys might totally disagree and that's fine. Like if you love her, that's great. I hope you can get her. But I just think that she does look a little bit not so cohesive. And then the jumpsuit itself, this is a very personal gripe. Okay, so like I get that people will not understand this um, or not agree with this, I should say. I obviously don't know because I can't touch the doll based on a photo, but this fabric feels like it would feel so icky on my fingers and that's a very personal thing. Definitely that's not something everyone would experience, but I feel like I would touch this and I would get like the heebie-jeebies. I wouldn't like that at all. And the jumpsuit just honestly seems kind of plain to me. I don't know. I get that she's got other stuff going on, but it's just not super, super exciting. What is exciting though is the box, and I will give credit where credit is due. The box design and the packaging is so well done. Like, it's absolutely incredible, and that's coming from someone who doesn't really care about packaging. I unbox all of my dolls, so nice packaging is nice, but it's not a selling point for me. This packaging is impressive. So when the box is like closed, you get a peek of Draculaura behind these curtains that kind of double as bat wings, like they sort of give off both vibes. And she's hanging upside down in the box, which is just so cool, obviously very vampiric. And then I do think she's supposed to be like a trapeze artist. I'm not 100% sure, but be very appropriate for that as well. And then the like flaps can unfold to become proper little bat wings and they frame the box where you can fully see Dracula hanging upside down. And I am just amazed. I am absolutely amazed by this packaging. It's also really hard to see because it's like hard to zoom in. I don't know what the name of this is. I feel like there's a technical term, but the box says Draculaura on like the clear plastic front and the way that it's written is done so that you can read it as Draculaura, whether you have the box right side up or upside down. Like it reads Draculaura both ways. I am beyond floored by this packaging. And again, I'm not someone who gets excited about packaging. This box has me excited and that takes a lot. I think that by far the box is like the best part of this whole design. I'm caught off guard and speechless because of it, which is not something that happens to me. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that. So mad props to the packaging design team because that is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> but now we should talk about the other thing that I personally like less and honestly this is maybe the biggest reason why I'm not interested in the doll myself. I do think this is something that won't bother some other people. Like I'm sure some people won't mind this at all. It's just for me it's a really big issue. Like I said, this is Freak de Chic Draculaura. It's a continuation from the Freak de Chic line. And if you guys have been here for quite a while, I feel like it's been a while since I've mentioned Freak de Chic, but that was one of my favorite OG Monster High lines of all time. That's one of the only playsets I have in my entire collection. I have the Freak de Chic playset. I have most of the dolls. I love that set. I love the designs. I love all of the like Easter eggs and the elements. It's so, so good. So you'd think that I'd be really, really into this doll, but my problem is that I don't think that she fits in with the other dolls in the line that she's supposed to be a part of. Cleo's Nile on Instagram had this little image of kind of all of the Freak the Chic dolls photoshopped together with Dracula in the middle so that you can really see how she's going to look with all of the other dolls. And I do just think she stands out way too much. For one thing, it is like a slightly different face. It's not like G3, like this is a G1 alumni collector doll, but the face is slightly different. And I think that while the makeup is my favorite part of the doll, if you like keep her as a standalone, I do think that it's one of the main things that makes me feel like she is so separate from the rest of the Freak to Chic line. It just 
doesn't look the same at all. And like, I get it. It's been several years. Like I understand, but for me, that would really, really bother me to have Draculaura displayed amongst my other Freak to Chic dolls and have her be standing out like this just wouldn't mesh with me. And the other thing, a lot of you guys on Instagram helped me like pinpoint this and realize what exactly it was. Almost every single Freak to Chic doll has black and white elements and it's usually black and white stripes. I think the only one who doesn't have this is Genifier, but she does have the same striped fabric, it's just different colors. So even though they all have individual color schemes and individual design elements and they do look very different, there is that running theme throughout them that really connects them and solidifies this into feeling like a cohesive lineup. And Draculaura doesn't have that and I think that that above all else is like what's killing her for me because she just doesn't look like part of this line. And once a couple of you guys messaged me and said that, I was like, that is absolutely it. That black and white fabric, the striping, it's gone. Like even if she had had pink striping, she doesn't have that. So it just feels so separate. The only pattern that she does have is the kind of like diamond checks on her bat wings. And that's the other thing is like all of the other dolls, in addition to the striping, have just lots of patterns happening. There's a lot of pattern mixing in Freak to Chic. And Dracula only has one pattern on her whole doll. So it's just... For me, it's a little bit disappointing because I feel like she doesn't fit into the line that I hold in such high esteem. And so that's why I don't like her, even though by all means I should. Like, I should be down for this. But yeah, I just don't think that she would look right. And that super, super bothers me. But I do, again, I understand that that's a very personal thing. And so while I've said a lot of negative stuff, I do think that I feel more lukewarm about this Draculaura than I do terrible about this Draculaura. She is $75, which I will never think is like an okay price for the collector dolls because from what I've experienced and from what I've heard from other people, it just doesn't really seem like they are worth quite that much of a markup compared to Playline level dolls. But I hate that this is, has to be framed as positive, but it is. At least it isn't worse. <laughs> like. I wouldn't have been surprised if you told me that Mattel was charging 80 85 for this. So the fact that she hasn't gone up in price is sadly a big deal to me. I also really do appreciate the fact that we got some more notice for this drop. I do think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is like a Comic-Con doll. And so there are people who are going to be going in person to buy this doll. But given, you know, Mattel's history with their Monster High releases, sometimes you get a bunch of notice, sometimes you get no notice at all. So I do really appreciate that people have a solid week to kind of look at these stock photos and decide if they want to try to get her, whether that is at the actual Comic-Con or online. So that's a huge positive to me as well. So I guess overall, while I personally don't like the doll, the reason this is a less complainy video and more of just a my opinions type video is because I don't love how the doll is executed, but everyone has their own opinions, so there are definitely going to be people watching this who love it, and that's great, you know, if it brings you joy, that is all that actually matters. And as far as releases go, I don't feel like this is even in, like, the top 10 of Mattel's worst collector releases, <laughs> so at that point, I have a lot less to complain about, which is a good thing, like, I know it can be kind of entertaining to like rant and rave about these doll releases, but I am glad that I don't have to be here sitting like screaming at the camera talking about how Mattel is being terrible at other fans again because personally I don't really like this one, but I don't think that release wise it's terrible and I think it could be a lot worse design wise. So overall I'm kind of feeling mid about her, like I don't love her, but I understand why people will. And so this gets to be a nice, like, chill video, chill release for me. I do wish you guys luck if you are trying to get her. If you are lucky enough to go to the Comic-Con, I hope that you have fun. But yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on this doll in the comments down below. I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.